Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready to lift up our Savior? Come on and bless him tonight. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty to deliver, mighty to save. We love you, Lord. Come on, just lift up, lift it up, lift it up. We honor you tonight, oh God. Whoa, water you turned into wine. You opened the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. We sing. Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you There's none like you Oh, say our God is greater Our God is stronger Our God is stronger God, you are higher God, you are higher than any yeah. Our God is a healer Our God is I'm 
worship him for who he is. He's a great God, Jehovah God. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Nisi, our banner of victory. Jehovah Shalom, the God of our peace. There is none like you, Lord. You are great and awesome. You are great. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we, God, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We lift you up. Mm. You are so awesome. You are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, it's time for us to worship Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Oh, we love you, Lord God. We love you, 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 Jesus.
all the praise. Ha. God, you are worthy of all my praise. Yes, God. Worthy of all my praise. Hey. Worthy of all my praise. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, ha. when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all you've done for me, and all you've done for me, all the ways you made, yes, God, all the doors that you opened, God, how you provided for me, Jesus, how you provided for me, God. Thank you for your goodness. Huh. For I will always worship the King. I will always worship the King. Come on, just worship with me. Worship with me. It's your prayer. Huh. Thank you, Jesus. It's your prayer. I'm living today because of you, God. It's your prayer. Oh, God. Mm. I could have been six feet and under, God, but it's your prayer. Ah. The coronavirus could have taken me out, but God, it's your prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I can breathe in and I can breathe out. It's your breath. Hallelujah. It's your breath. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Father. We exalt your name. Grace and peace, family. Once again, welcome to our Tuesday night service during this season of Lent. My name is Minister Dario Lariosa, and I have the honor and privilege to teach you the word tonight. Our title for tonight's teaching is this, Seek Him, Serve Others. You can write that in your notes, or you can turn to somebody if you're sitting with a group of individuals. Just say out loud, Seek Him while you serve others. Amen? So family, we know this about Lent. Lent is a season of reflection geared towards deepening our relationship with God. And we do it through a couple of ways, through prayer, fasting, and especially giving. This is this time where we seek to draw closer to Christ and discern a couple of things. We want to discern what He is doing in our lives, but also we want to see how we could play a part in fulfilling His purposes on the earth. And so, if anything, the goal of Lent can be found in one word, and that one word is called reorient. Everybody say reorient. To reorient something is to change the focus or direction of. So in essence, the goal of Lent is this. The goal of Lent is to reorient our hearts around the reality that Christ has died for our sins and he resurrected from the grave as evidence that all of our sin has been fully, freely, and forever paid. You got to say that out loud. Fully, freely, and forever paid. And, 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 and Man, family, just thank Christ. Man, you got to just, I don't know about you, but I, when I say that fully, freely, and forever paid, man, I just, in gratitude, I just want to say thank you for his life, his death, and his resurrection. And in essence, that's what the gospel is. The gospel is this, and I got this from a theologian by the name of Ed Stetzer, and he says this about the gospel. The gospel is the good news that God, who is more holy than we can imagine, 
imagine, looked upon with compassion a people who are more sinful than we can possibly admit. And he sent Jesus into history to establish his kingdom and reconcile people and the world to himself. Jesus, whose love is more extravagant than we can measure, came to sacrificially die for us so that by his death and resurrection, we might gain through his grace what the Bible defines as new and eternal life. That's a dope statement right there about the gospel. And we'll probably have that on the on notes and something, but please just get it, you know, rewind that. That's the gospel. And that's what we're celebrating during Lent. And so I have four suggestions that we want to, that I want to kind of give to you tonight about how to make most of this season. And so suggestion number one, be honest. Turn to person next to you or write in your notes, be honest. What do I mean by that? In Ephesians chapter five, verses 15 to 17, it says this family, look carefully how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So what do I mean by being honest? This is a time of self-examination with a focus on grace and through prayer and in the company of encouraging believers, we take the time to be honest with ourselves. But however, here's a, here's a however. However, don't let self-examination lead you to self-condemnation. But remember the promises of scripture that you belong to Christ and nothing can separate you from his great love. And so family, I wanna give you some uh, self-examination questions for you to consider during this Lent season. And they're hard hitting. I would be honest with you, as I go through these myself, it's like an, a, a holy ouch moment for me. So I'm gonna, I wanna share these questions with you. Self-examination question number one, am I consciously or unconsciously creating the impression that I am better, that I am a better person than I really am? In other words, am I a hypocrite? Ouch. Question number two, am I honest in all acts or words or do I exaggerate? Question number three, do I confidently pass on to others what was told to me in confidence? In essence, can I be trusted? Next question, am I a slave to dress, friends, work, or habits? Hmm. Next question, am I self-conscious, self-pitying, or self-justifying. Another question is this, did the Bible live in me today? Another question, do I give it time to speak to me each day? Here's another question concerning prayer. Am I enjoying prayer? One more question to consider, when did I last speak to somebody else with the object of trying to win that person to Christ? Another, Am I making contacts with other people and using them for the master's glory? Do I pray about the money I spend? Do I get to bed on time and get up on time? Do I disobey God in any area of my life? Do I insist upon doing something for which my conscience is uneasy? Am I delegated in any part of my life? Am I jealous, impure, critical, irritable, touchy, or distrustful? Huh. How do I spend my spare time? Another question, do I thank God I am not as other people, especially as the Pharisees who despise the publican? Hmm. Is there anybody whom I fear, dislike, disown, criticize, or hold a resentment toward or disregard? If so, what am I doing about it? Last two questions, do I grumble or complain constantly? And lastly, is Christ real to me? I know these are some hard hitting, up in your face kind of questions, but that's what Lent is, this time of self-examination. So what do we do? Number one, we wanna be honest with ourselves. Number two, we, we're, we're, we're fasting, right? 
We want to, but we want to fast in order to feast. You got to write that down. We want to fast in order to feast. What do I mean by that? So we know that the central spiritual practice of Lent is fasting from food. So we do this in order to feast on God's presence, power, and provision. That should make you shout right there. We want to fast in order to feast on God's presence, his power, and his provision. So fasting serves, family, as a reminder that God is himself the great feast. That's a hallelujah right there. That God himself is the great feast. That's why we fast. Fasting also helps us to remember the gift of love liberty and eternal life that God has provided for us through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so as you're fasting, I want to challenge you to do this. Fast from the familiar. Fast from the comfortable. Give up and abstain from those things that come natural to you, that are necessary, and are normal for you. The three ends. Fast from the familiar. Fast from those things that make you comfortable. Abstain from those things that, are, that is natural, necessary, and normal to you. That will make you uncomfortable, but man, it will put you in a place where you're, you'll hear God in different ways, where you'll even start serving God in different ways. And this gets me to point number three. We want to, during this time during Lent, to be compassionate. Everybody say, be compassionate. Family, when is the last time you served someone and didn't expect anything in return? Hmm. See, we've learned here at Christian Cultural Center that service is a spiritual discipline and Lent is a great time to activate your ambassadorship. Service is also detaching ourselves from self-centeredness and it brings us to a place of unselfish love. And service also does this, family. It fosters love, care, and concern for our neighbor. Which brings me to number four, something to consider during Lent. And it's not an easy one, and we take this word for granted at, at, you know, also, but would you consider spreading some love? You can write that in your notes. You can say that out loud. Spread some love during this Lent season. What do we mean by that? So make this season a season to reach out to family, friends, and also neighbors in a special and creative way. So the question is, who is my neighbor? So when you look at Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, uh, that tells us of the parable of the Good Samaritan. And clearly in this parable, uh, there's, the question is this. And an old school theologian, I read this in a commentary and I forgot what the name of the, the theologian was, but I thought this was so amazing and it challenged me. And it says this in his commentary. Who is my neighbor? The neighbor was the Samaritan who approached the wounded man and made him his neighbor. The neighbor is not he whom I find in my path, but rather he in, but rather he in whose path I place myself. He whom I approach and actively seek. So the question is this, family, and this is challenging. Who is in your daily path and who is not? That is, and that's part of the problem. We are limited in loving our neighbor by our narrow pathways of the neighbors around us, our people, and those who we consider us. But Jesus is saying we have to go outside the boundaries of our normal path to find the people who are the ultimate test of the question, who is my neighbor? So the neighbor we need most to reach out to will only be found if we actively seek them out by deliberately placing ourselves in a different pathway than those that are normal to us and our people. Tim Keller says it like this. He says, by depicting a Samaritan helping a Jew, Jesus could not have found a more forceful way to say that anyone at all in need, regardless of race, politics, class, and religion, is your neighbor. Not everyone is your brother or sister in faith, but everyone, you need to shout everyone, but everyone is your neighbor and you must love your neighbor. So challenging. And so also during this Lent season, you may know this, that we are 
offering you uh, an experience during Lent that will, that will, that will kind of help us out at the food pantry. Because here at Christian Cultural Center, we, we define mission as this. Mission is this, is, spread, is sharing and spreading the knowledge, love, and compassion of Christ locally and globally through evangelism and humanitarian works. So here's an open invitation to join us on our local missionary experiences here at our pantry every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So as you go through this Lent season, be reminded of these four things. Number one is what? Be honest. Number two, fast to feast. Number three, be compassionate. And number four, spread love. Family, I pray that you learned something today. Family, I pray that the word of God stirred your heart. Can I just pray for you really quickly? Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this season in which we can direct our focus and attention to you. So, Father, as we seek you in more deeper and intimate ways, Father, I also ask that as we seek, we will also serve. So, Father, if it may not be at uh, our, our food pantry, Father, give your people who are watching right now uh, the ability to reach out maybe to family, friends, and loved ones who are hurting, who are struggling. And, Father, I also pray that they will also get out of their comfort zone, too, and truly discover who their neighbor is that you want for them to actively engage with whether it be on their job or in their neighborhoods, whether it be somebody on a bus or a train that they see on a regular. Father, anoint them afresh to actively engage that neighbor for the glory of you. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We love on you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Come on, let's continue to worship.
you sing that tonight. You won't let go of me. If you believe it, come on, say. You won't let go of me. He won't let go of you. You won't let go. Come on, he promises. You won't let go. You won't let go. your love. We're saying 